So this is the sewage treatment plant. Hold your nose. Together, we could learn about the journey of sewage from the toilets, the problems we may encounter there, and now its travels to the sewage treatment plant on board. Let's observe how sewage is treated on this vessel. From the top, we can observe four chambers and an air blower, which provides pressurized air. We'll see why this is important later, step by step. First, there's the biofilter bacteria chamber, where bacteria will produce a sludge, which will later be separated by gravity in a sedimentation tank. A part of the sewage will then be filtered by an activated carbon tank and finally disinfected in a sterilization tank. So, you want to look inside? Get ready. Don't say I didn't warn you. What did you expect? Just joking. I'll show you what's really going on inside. So, from the vacuum pump, sewage enters through a screen, which you can see me in the wiper cleaning. This screen will filter out the big and inorganic materials that could clog the system, such as toilet paper, plastics, and unmacerated sewage. Next, we have the biofilter tank, which use aerobic bacteria to decompose sewage through a divided tank. This tank has a media screen, which is like a plastic that these microorganisms stick to. These bacteria are happy with two things, sewage and air. They convert heavy sewage into a sludge, which will pass through the division where more media sheets with bacteria wait to continue liquefying the sewage. This process is constant and giving air very important. If no air is supplied, anaerobic bacteria will appear, which also decompose sewage or produce explosive vapors. Anyway, aerobic bacteria are helpful and we need to maintain them very happy. From the top of the second part of the biofilter tank, the liquefied sludge will then go to a second sedimentation tank. Here you can see the shape and division of the tank. Heavy sludge parts will sink to the bottom and with air from the blower will go back through a return line to the biofilter tank to continue decomposition. However, Lighter sewage water will rise and continue to the third chamber. This third chamber is the activated carbon tank. Light sewage water enters through this pipe to the bottom and passes through a carbon filter, which will stop floating solids from rising, as well as lower the chemical oxygen demand for the next tank by carbon absorption. I'll explain COD and BOD more on a future video that covers MARPOL 4. The last chamber is the sterilization tank, which treats the filtered sewage water with sodium hypochlorite to chlorinate the sewage and disinfect it by means of this chemical pump. Sewage is discharged depending on these level sensors. When the level is high from the fourth chamber, it will flow through this discharge line to the sewage discharge pump. And finally, through these valves, one can discharge the sewage to either the sewage holding tank or send it overboard. However, one must follow always MARPOL Annex 4 regulations. 
I'll teach you the basics right now. Hey, it's me again, the Engine Cadet. So, how was it? Pretty interesting, right? I mean, to be honest, when I first came on board, I had next to no idea about the sewage treatment plant. I imagined they would throw it at sea. Well, now I'm very interested about this because it's something that works consistently and every day. It's pretty crazy. So like I previously said, I really want to go more in depth about the sewage treatment plant, especially the maintenance that we need to carry out, such as adding chemicals to maintain the bacteria and how to create a specific concentration of sodium hypochlorite, which you need to know a little bit of chemistry. Also, the periodic cleaning and flushing of tanks, because sometimes if you are not properly maintaining them, they can get clogged. And the worst thing that can happen is that the whole system gets clogged. That means you're gonna have to open it up and it's gonna be a very, very dirty day. <laughs> but you learn a lot, I admit. And also in the next video, I like to go over Marpole Annex 4, Prevention of Sewage Pollution, which deals with things called chemical oxygen demand, biological oxygen demand, and suspended solids, which if your sewage treatment plant is working correctly, it should do it automatically. However, you can also analyze this to make sure what you're discharging overboard isn't contaminating the marine environment. Before I end it, I want you to have this basic tip of Marple Annex 4, which will help you in at least determining whether or not you're able to discharge sewage at sea. You see, if the vessel is less than three nautical miles from nearest land, sewage is completely prohibited from being discharged. That's why we have sewage holding tanks. In this case, if it's at utmost necessary to discharge the sewage, we would send it to the tank. However, it has a limited capacity. If you're within 30 and 12 nautical miles from nearest land, you're allowed to discharge only commuted or disinfected sewage. Well, the sewage that's coming out from the fourth chamber, in our case, which is the sterilization chamber. This sewage is treated, therefore, we can discharge it. And if you're over 12 nautical miles from nearest land, then you're allowed to discharge untreated sewage. However, the ship must be en route having a speed of at least four knots, and it should not be instantaneous. It should go at a moderated rate, approved by your administration, because it depends on your sewage treatment plan. So, with those basic tips, you should at least know whether or not you're allowed to discharge sewage. And, well, that's that, for now at least. But there's so much more to learn, and I'm very, very happy I could share a little bit about the engine room with you all. And I hope to continue little by little showing you what little I know as a cadet and beyond. So, see you next time, seafarer.